Hello and welcome back. We are finishing up that uh, Sankutuko style chef knife. And pretty much still, I got all the forge scale on it, so I'm taking it off with this Scotch Bright belt. It is a, uh, I think it's an extra fine one. Um, all the little holes in the pitting. Um, later, I'll find out that they just don't come out as easy. But. We're working it through here. I'm keeping, uh, since I've already tempered it, I'm keeping that jar of water next to me. And you got to keep dipping it in to keep the um, temperature down on it because you will lose the hardness in there. I just switched the belt out to a uh, fine one. I think it does a little bit better job. I have a, a ultra fine one as well. I think it's gold. Uh, I haven't. I don't think I've ever used it either. But again, thank you for everybody coming back and watching. Go ahead and like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and uh, share the video. So my second thought was that I could go ahead and clean it up by putting it on the wheel. I'm using a uh, green jewelers. Um, paste and I'm in this one I'm using flux I like the flux it, or flex or flicks or whatever the heck it's called and um, yeah this is uh, this wheel is just a completely open like towel wheel yeah, I forget what they're called but obviously this is the first time I using it because it looks like I shot a couch and the fur is going everywhere I'm using a wire brush on a um, drill there to get out all the little divots just to get the scale out and it was a real pain but it left it with a lot of swirls and scratches that were easy to get off I just put the whole thing on another scotch bright pad here just the medium one or the fine one and it, it took a lot of the little scratches out and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with a uh, another sanding through uh, belts I'm using um, belts on my 4x36 uh, 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 sander. That belt or that uh, platter I just used was a uh, 120 and I'm using a 220 right now or 240, 240 right now and it's smoothing out a lot of those uh, little micro scratches that the uh, brush gave and um, putting it back on uh, the wheel using the green again. Here we go. Okay, um, I'm getting the handle all prepped and ready. I'm trying to do all the little fine details before you put it on the, uh, the blade itself because it just works out so much better in the end. Um, I, later on, I, I still will have to sand uh, different edges of it um, that are real close to the blade because I have it a little, uh, little bit bulkier than I wanted to. So off camera I went ahead and uh, took the uh, through the um, yeah see I'm showing where all the little scratches and stuff are from uh, the bigger uh, sander the uh, 36 grit or 40 grit that I was using and uh, that's what I'm using this 220 trying to get all the uh, little things uh, little scratches off there and see and that, that's why I say I like to put it together with the tape because it holds it together and if you just glue the tape to the tape it pops right off just like it did here for me um, here we go we're gonna glue it up I'm gonna tape up the top here and just make sure it butts up right close to as close as possible I'm using your standard five minute epoxy here I'm 
This is actually funny because I, I, my hands were all sticky, so I had to have one of my shop hands help me out and put it together. Uh, I've got an acetone here, and I'm wiping off all the extra little edges and everything just to give it that nice, uh, clean look when it comes out. Because after the epoxy dries, it's a real pain in the butt to get off. Knopping off the nipples there from the pins. And now I'm going to go back to shaping the handle doing the rounded edges after it's fitted on it seems like it's a i like to do it better that way i mean i've done it both ways and the surface area of which to grip it why it's already put on your handle is a lot better it's more difficult when it's uh damascus because once the blade is etched and you go to sand it you're going to rub away that spine right there in the handle See, I've been doing the finger wells here because I already had them plotted out based on the um, the handle or the uh, tang itself, but you have to regroove them once it's on because it's more of a guideline. In fact, I, I hogged off some of the steel too to make it better fitting. And uh, I, if you see, I lean over the the knife really far over to get a deeper uh, finger well, so it's more comfortable when you you uh, put it on. And I left the right side of the handle a little proud because that goes into the palm of the handle and I think it fits a lot better. I've used knives for years in the kitchen and uh, that's one of the biggest complaints is that even though that they're even, I'm right-handed or even if you're left-handed, I, I, it feels much more secure. Sometimes we'd even wrap up a, a little towel and hold on to it as we're holding our knives because it, it just starts rocking loose and whatnot when they're too small. And so this way it hugs up nice and perfect around the um, palm of your hand. And again, and now I'm going to be uh, finishing up the polishing on the knife. So I want to make sure that I tuck down the, the tape all as close as I can to the handle to get every little bit. I'm not using any stones when I'm sharpening this one. I'm just straight using, um, I think I started at uh, in the 200s and I slowly worked my way up to 1,000 grit. Um, like I said, I, I, I didn't find that I needed the stones. Um, I do put it on a leather strop though. I have one that fits over my 4x36. And uh, once you pull that wire off, see, I'm doing it really thin to pull that wire off and getting it closer. But I realize I still need to put it on that leather strop. So yeah, you can go on Amazon and get one that'll fit across your, uh, I think they even have one for, the, for the, this 1x30. But I thought that was too small, too, not, not with enough into it. See, there's the leather strop right there. And I'm slowly pulling it across. And double checking the wire every once in a while to see if it's on there. And look at that, nice and smooth. Yeah, it, it cuts really well. And uh, here's something you guys can't really see, but it's peeling little, little slivers off of it. I'm actually slicing the paper, layers of the paper off before it actually cuts. And that thing is razor, razor sharp. Mm -hmm. 
Like a, no resistance when I was pushing it. Give it one last polish before I put it away and put it on present. I'm using a uh, beautiful metal polish. I actually, the jar right there, I can't really see what it is. I, um, but I, I stuff in there um, uh, steel wool. And I do small circles all up and down it. Here, I'm using, uh, I, I flamed it up to get that nice char look to it. And I finished it off with that thousand grip paper. And here I got boiled linseed oil that I'm going to go ahead and dab on there to bring out the shine. And um, I, I learned that trick about uh, burning the wood in, I think, 7th grade wood shop. I just like the look it gives. Throw a wire brush across it or uh, some high grit uh, sandpaper smooths it out and I think it just gives a nice cultured look to it uh, I know I got a couple close-up shot yeah see it just gives it that nice aged really nice look to it don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below um, I'm gonna start a new series of fantasy blades that are gonna be fun um, I know we're talking about doing a supernatural blade and uh, maybe some Star Wars blades, you know, things like that. But, yeah, thank you and uh, have a great day. See you on the next video. LTD Forge out.